The age of the hot cylinder engine began with the age of steam. Hi, I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skill, and this is another episode of Toy Talk. The industrial age began with the application of water and steam power. Water power was confined to the sources of abundant water. However, not the case with steam. Of course, you had to have a source for water, but steam power could be used a long way away from rivers and streams. Today's episode takes us down on the farm, so smash the like button so we can see the progression of power on farms. For centuries, farmers relied on animals for power on their farms. This is where the phrase, beast of burden, came from. However, with the Industrial Revolution, the horse, oxen, and mules were slowly being replaced by steam power. During the mid-1800s, steam technology was applied to locomobiles, or traction engines. <laughs> Tractor, for short. These early replacements for draft horses were incredible machines and great innovations. But also proved to be slow, heavy, and cumbersome. Steam traction engines were dangerous. Fire was a constant danger, and the danger of explosions became a constant fear for farmers. Enter petroleum, kerosene, and gasoline. And this is where the story of the origin of the tractor takes an interesting turn. John Froelich entered the world on November 24, 1849, in Gerard, Iowa. Born to a German immigrant, Johannes Heinrich Froelich. His father owned a farm and operated a grain elevator near Froelich, Iowa. And he ran a thrashing operation over in Langford, South Dakota. John Froelich was fascinated by steam-driven machinery and farm implements. And not only that, he also worked on them and understood their weaknesses. In 1890, Froelich purchased a gasoline internal combustion engine from the Van Dusen Engine Works in Cincinnati, Ohio. He did this to run his grain elevator. While working with the engine at his elevator, John got the idea of using a gasoline engine to power a traction engine. In 1892, Froelich mounted a single cylinder Van Dusen engine on a Robinson chassis with a traction system of his own design. And thus, he created the very first internal combustion powered tractor that moved forward and backward and could also power a threshing machine. Froelich's assistant, William Mann, helped John transport the machine by rail to their South Dakota operation and proceeded to use it to power their J.I. Case threshing machine through 72,000 bushels of grain in 52 days. A record amount of grain in that short a time. In 1893, a group of investors backed Froelich in forming the Waterloo Gasoline Traction Engine Company. This was a disappointment to John because only four Froelich's tractors were ever built. In 1895, the company became the Waterloo Gasoline Engine Company and went to work building small, stationary gas engines. These engines were used for pumping water and powering grain elevators. John Froelich soon left the company, and the Waterloo Company changed hands more than once in the early 1900s, but eventually began to produce the Waterloo Boy gas engine farm tractors. 
a design much like the one that John Froelich brought to the company more than a decade earlier. By 1918, Waterloo Boy had produced three models of the tractor, the LA, the R, and the N models, with over 8,000 tractors sold. Also in 1918, the John Deere Company of Moline, Illinois, made a bid of $2.2 million to acquire the Waterloo Boy Tractor Company, thus taking on the most successful modern tractor company of its time, and all of this built off of John Froelich's original design for the gasoline internal combustion traction engine. John Froelich went on from his early tractor building endeavor to create engines at the Novelty Iron Works in Dubuque, Iowa. And then he worked with his brother Gottlieb in manufacturing before moving on to St. Paul, Minnesota. John Froelich was a lifelong inventor credited with such things as a washing machine, a dishwasher and dryer, a mechanical corn picker, and the first air conditioner that later became the Carrier Air Conditioning Company. There's more to John Froelich's life story, but that is his contribution to farming. He changed the farmer's way of life and the way that farmers go about their day down on the farm. He is remembered today with a festival in his hometown. Now, let's head on down to the rock quarry and talk about one of the very first Ertl Prestige Series releases. And this is the 1 16th scale Prestige Series by Ertl diecast replica of John Froelich's tractor. The real tractor actually sits there in John Deere at their home office and it is on display for pretty much anybody to see. And Ertl did an amazing job. Back then, the Prestige series was an all new concept. They hadn't done these before. They did this one and they did a steam engine and that was it. Before that, they had collectors and precision series. This was the beginning of the Prestige. Just look at all the detail on this thing. And then I'm gonna do this. Look at that. As it rolls, the belts roll, the gears roll, and the wheels roll. Now, because of the complexity of it, it doesn't roll very fast, and it could bind those gears, so I would be very careful with it. But it runs the whole engine right off of the wheels, just like a reverse. Now, you could also spin the motor wheels and make it roll like that. But the belts over time, they just don't have the what it takes to stay going. So it just works easier if you roll it. But be very careful rolling it if you find one of these. It has the steel wheels here, which are multiple spoke. And look, they use little screws to put them together. Got the steel wheels up front. They're all cast die cast. There is some plastic parts on this, but it is mostly all die cast. The frame is here that is made out of wood on the real one, but they molded it to look like it is wood, and the deck plate there they molded to make it look like it's wood. It's die cast, but it's molded to look like wood and painted that way. Get your flywheel here, and this one here has a belt pulley type wheel, and then the main flywheel. Got the little gears. Got all the workings of the engine, the piping, and everything that goes with it. These were pretty simple machines. They weren't like these modern engines which are incredibly complex these were quite simple the steering here if you've got the patience it will turn the chains which turn the others but it's very very tedious and not really worth it but it does work the lever doesn't work but the throttle lever here does other levers work really really neat piece I wish I knew what every part was on this engine and this model so I could really explain what they are, but you've got an old worm gear right there for steering. Now over here you can see where there's your belt. Right in there, there's your belt that goes to there. 
which is the start of the drive line. There's a little idler on it. And then once the drive line goes through all the gears, it gets down to this axle rod across here, which runs a ring gear that's on the inside of the steel wheels. There's a ring gear on both sides. And then that's how it rolls. This other belt up here, it runs the pump. And I'm pretty sure that's the water pump for the cooling right there. And then that, I'm not really sure what that is. There's probably your fuel tank. That may just be a spare can of water. I don't know. Turned up on top. Just look at all the detail. Exhaust, mufflers, intake, cleaners, everything. This thing here is as detailed as you can get. These were one step below the Precisions and way above the collectors and everything else at the time. And they've only gotten better with it. This model would have been a really cool Precision piece. Now, I said there was some plastic parts. This back piece here is plastic, but that's okay. That's really that. And then some of the little ancillary parts are plastic. The belts, well, they're a rubber belt. So, who knows how long they will really last. But some of that rubber dries up over time. It has an oscillating and steerable axle, and it steers. And the rear axle is fixed. And then here you can see all the gears. Again, Ertl did a great job making this model, and I wish I knew a little bit more about all the parts so I could explain them. But, wow, talk about a cool model. Here on the back, you can see the drawbar hitch. Pretty simple. I mean, this was the first track, really. And out of gasoline. And it, this started the whole trend of everything we've got today. Look how smooth it rolls. About as smooth as a real one, I'd imagine, with those ring gears. They were tending to bind from time to time, but they were a good system. Muffler there, and then air intake up there, and some other parts. Somewhere there would be a governor and a few other parts on here. I'm sure this is part of the radiator system. Pump, flywheel, everything. Isn't that cool? I love how they actually made it work using the belts as you roll it it turns all of those works really cool but at the same time you can't move this thing very fast because those gears will bind and you don't want to break them now the real one was painted with these red with the wood and the gray that's i guess probably the paint that john frolick had at the time maybe that was just the colors he liked but that was the way it was i've seen the real one sitting in John Deere's home office, and it was a beautiful machine. Granted, these are small, not much horsepower to them, but talk about revolutionizing the entire farming industry. The internal combustion engine traction engine. So much improvement over the steam engines of the time for safety for the operators. We know this is a very dangerous machine to run. Not really that powerful, but it had less risk of blowing up and causing fires. And John Froelich was way ahead of his time when he designed this and built it. And it's a shame that he couldn't get anybody during his time to actually bite. But look at all the farms today. And that is the Ertl 116th scale Prestige Series diecast replica of John Froelich's first tractor, the very first mechanized internal combustion engine powered farm tractor the revolutionize of the farms was on at this point did you know how important the john frolic tractor was to agriculture to go along with its importance grab my free report on tips for valuing your collection with the link down below also please go on and leave a tip or sponsor me over on my Patreon page to help support this channel. You can also make a purchase on any of my web stores that are linked down below to help me out as well. As you can imagine, it takes a lot of time to keep this channel going, so any support really helps a whole lot. Thanks for watching. Please go on and smash that like button, share this video, and subscribe to my channel. I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skill, and I'll be back soon with some new content 
and another episode of Toy Talk.